Welcome. This video is going to show us how to create bar charts and pie charts based on the example that we covered in class, which had a physical therapist that wanted to know what types of injuries were causing her patients to need rehabilitation. So the first thing we're going to have to do, obviously, is get the data into Jump. So first off, we're going to go to File, New Data Table, and this will bring up a blank spreadsheet in which we can enter the data into Jump. Remember that in Jump, when we're entering data, and this is true for any statistical software, you want the columns corresponding to your variables, the rows corresponding to your individuals. So in this first column, I'm going to click in the first cell. We're going to go ahead and enter the body parts into this column. We have back. And remember, and this is generally true of any software that you use, you, you want your variable names to be meaningful. So rather than call this column one, if you click where it says column one, actually double click, we'll be able to edit that name and now we can label this as body part. We need to input a second column now of the count. So if I double click in the second column, uh, it'll fill it with dots, meaning it's blank data, but we can go ahead and enter these counts in here. Twenty. Okay, and one thing worth mentioning is that I'm entering this data to go from one cell to the next. I just type enter, or hit enter, excuse me, and it'll drop me down to the next level. All right, again, let's change this variable name. Uh, you could call this count or frequency. All of those are appropriate. Okay, once we then have the data, what we can do is go ahead and create the graph. So to create a bar chart or a pie chart, we're going to use the graph builder. So it's up here under graph, graph builder. And this will allow us to sort of drag the variables to where we want them. Want them. Excuse me. Remember that whenever we have a bar chart, we want a categorical variable on the x-axis. So in this case, our categorical variable is the body part. So if you select that, drag it to the x-axis, it will now have on the x-axis those various body parts that we're interested in. On the y-axis for a bar chart, we, we want counts or frequencies. So if we select the count variable, drag it to the y-axis, we will now have on that y-axis our counts. The next thing you have to do is tell Jump what type of graph you actually want. And your options are listed up here at the top. If you pick any one of them and hover over it, it will tell you which it is. So I'm going to hover over this one. It says bar, shows a response, summarized by categories. This is the bar graph that we want. So if we go ahead and select that, uh, we will now have a, an initial version of our bar graph. What we want to do is customize this and make it look a little bit nicer than it does. Um, the first thing I want you to notice is that, generally speaking, whenever you create a bar graph in Jump, it will alphabetize these categories that are on the x-axis. So in order to do this, what we have to do is drag any quantitative variable to the x-axis. It doesn't matter what the quantitative variable is. It actually doesn't even matter if it has anything to do with this problem. However, if you look at our data set, we only have two variables. Count is the one that is quantitative. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select count. I'm going to drag it. And be careful when you do this, but you want it to hover just above the x-axis. Do not go below the x-axis, but put it just above the x-axis, and now you will see our bars uh, in descending order. So I'm going to go ahead and release. The graph is now in descending order. To be honest, most of the time we want it to be in descending order. And so in order to change this, what you do is if you hover just below the x-axis, you'll notice that instead of having an arrow, when you get to the right spot, the graph will have a little hand. Uh, we'll refer to this as the grabber from here forward. But if you get the grabber symbol right below that x-axis, right click, you will notice that it brings up a menu and it has ascending checked. If you check that, or essentially uncheck it, if you will, what it's going to do is put that graph or that axis now in descending order. So we can clearly see that back injuries accounted for the greatest amount of people in rehab for this physical therapist, followed by knee injuries, followed by shoulders, etc. Okay, now to make this a little bit nicer yet, what we can do is put some labels on our graph. Um, you will notice if you go over here on the left side, a couple of things that we could do is we could, if you go to where it says label and change that from none to value, what it's going to do is it's going to put the counts on top of the bars. That way we know exactly how many patients are in each of those categories. For a small data set like this, we probably could have figured it out by looking at the graph. However, if this y-axis had been 0 to 5,000 to 10,000 to 15,000, would have been much more challenging to do. Anyway, we did that by selecting label and changing it to value. 
Now, the next thing I want us to be able to do is to customize the access titles. So to customize an access title, title, what you want to do is just click on the access title. Um, we're going to change this back to nice and simple, just say body part uh, instead of whatever it had. Uh, and we can change that access title to whatever we'd like. If we wanted to change this, say, from count to frequency, click on it, type in frequency, and now that access is labeled with the word frequency rather than count. Okay, similarly, if you were to click up here where it says count versus body part, we could change the title. Uh, just call it bar graph for the sake of showing you how to change the title, but that is that. Uh, a couple of more things with this. First off, sometimes when we create bar graphs, rather than having the counts or the frequencies on the y-axis, we want the relative frequencies or the percents. So in order to change this from count or frequency to a percent or a proportion on that y-axis, what we can do is if you go under summary statistic over here on the left, choosing from the drop-down menu, we can choose percent of total. And now this axis would be labeled with percentages. Uh, you will notice that this automatically changed the category or the, the bar labels as well to percents, telling us how many percent of each, how many, what percentage of the patients had each type of injury. Now, if you would change this to percents, clearly you would cha change the label on the y-axis. So we can change this to percent. And now that y-axis will have the label percent. However, to match what we had on our notes, I'm going to change it back to counts rather than percents. And again, to do this, you would just go to summary statistic from the drop-down menu, choose mean. And now those counts are back on that y-axis. One more time, we're going to have to change this title. Go ahead and change that from frequency back to count, or excuse me, percent back to count. And now the graph is looking pretty good. One last thing that we want to do with a bar graph, since this is a, the most simplistic type of bar graph where we're not comparing you know, men and women or, or different types of groups, uh, we want to get rid of this legend. The legend is shown over here. It just has a blue box and says count, really not informative in any way. In order to get rid of this, if you go under Graph Builder, remember that underneath the red triangle, uh, there are a number of options. So if you uh, click on that, what we can do, you will notice that Show Legend is currently checked. If if you select it, that legend that was previously over here will disappear. Now what we need to be able to do is get this graph out of jumping into some type of word processing document. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to put it in Word. So to do this, I'm going to right click on the graph. You will notice a bunch of options showing up. The bottom one, edit, is what we want. So if you select edit, then towards the bottom here, there will be another option titled copy graph. So if we copy graph and then go into our word processing software, you can just go ahead and paste that graph in there. Obviously, it can be resized by clicking on it and messing with the arrows, uh, but nonetheless, that's all you have to do to get it into Microsoft Word. Okay, going back to jump quickly then, I just want to show you how you would create a bar chart. Really from this point, or excuse me, a pie chart to do this, all you would have to do is go up along the top and select the one that looks like a pie. Again, if you hover over it, it'll tell you that it's a pie chart. Uh, there's our pie chart. Um, whenever you have a pie chart, you really need some type of labels on here. So first off, let's get that legend back. To get the legend back, going up under the, the near graph builder where the right or the, the red triangle is, excuse me, select that and now choose the option show legend again. The legend will show up here and again it helps to have counts or, or percentages telling you how much of the, the whole that each category represents. So if you go under label on this left side and change this to label by percent of total, it will give you the percentages. If you had selected label by value, it would give you the counts. Uh, whatever you prefer is fine with me. The last thing to discuss here is let's go ahead and get rid of the axes label since there's really no X and Y axis. So if you would select this, go ahead and delete those X and Y axis labels. And now obviously we want to change this title up here from bar graph to pie chart. We can go ahead and put any type of label we'd like on there. Again, to to get this into your word processing software, simply click in the background of the graph, uh, right click that is, select edit, go to copy graph, and now I can go into Microsoft Word or whatever software I'm using and simply paste it in there. Resizing it, and we are done. Thank you.